Aria. Mamezi Romani Inc. FM. The, the last time we spoke, I mean, we didn't go too much into um, why you, you, you left Kaiser Chiefs. It's been a few months now. Um, you know, you've maybe had, you know, a bit of time to, 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 to reflect. Are you able to now talk about the reasons um, why you ended up parting company with, with Chiefs when you were second on the table and there were seven mm-hmm. games uh, left, if, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, I don't really need a lot. I didn't really need a lot of time for reflection. Was all I think. I think it was pretty clear to me the uh, what was happening and what was going on. Uh, after after I had COVID around the mid the mid the mid season break, uh, I'd realised I'd realised even before then that there were there were agendas within the club. That were that were driving the club in a certain direction, and that those agendas were going to be satisfied, whether I liked it or not. There were going to be things going on in the background, possibly, possibly that it was it was not what I what what I thought was the correct decision, but it was going to be done. And when I came back from COVID, it just it just went a little bit underground. It just went underground. People undermining undermining what you're doing, uh, people backstabbing, people talking to players, people looking for players that I didn't really want or, or signings. And so it all went in that direction. So I was aware of that. I was aware of that. Now, when it got to the point of me actually parting company, the chairman said, the chairman said to me that he was worried that after the Supersport game, that uh, a handful of supporters had thrown a, a plastic bottle at me, and then the security of the of the, of the the club was in danger. So what should we do, coach? And I and I, based on the fact that I thought this was going the wrong way, and based on the fact that he he was clearly worried, I just thought that I read between the lines and thought, no, this is this is the club wanting to go one way, and uh, and they know that. If I'm on board, I won't. I won't go along with that. I want it to go in a different way. So I just, I just thought, no, let's have this amicable, agree- amicable agreement instead of having a big fight, and uh, and therefore I, I accepted the chairman's suggestion. Now I read in the papers immediately that I'd been sacked, which was not the case. And I've even read, I think the chairman, and I don't know why he would feel a nece- necessity. Maybe it's because he wants to justify what's going on in the club at this moment in time but the chairman says that uh, that's why they had to fire me well that was never said that was never said nothing was mentioned about young players or or anything else those were the reasons given now did I think that I should have been given more time I just realized that the agendas the agendas that weren't open it wasn't open and coming listen coach it was it was in the background all the time. It was a let's say it was more of a political thing than a than a, than a sporting thing, and probably one that the the coaches that had been at Kaiser Chiefs had battled with exactly the same. So uh, I think I wasn't surprised. Uh, I'd read it a long way back, and I just thought that the way it was done was probably. You know, used in a sort of fake uh, reason, rather than coming out straight and saying that, look, you're not, you're not, you're not going to accept the way we want to do things. So it's best we part company. Um, coach, uh, maybe another element to it is that of a sporting, the sporting director. You know, he's a. Uh, mm-hmm. 
you know, obviously seems to now be hands on. Uh, a lot of the signings that they have made, they've made now into the new, uh, the new season, uh, seems that he's running the show. How was your relationship yeah. with the sporting director and the signings that they've made now? Had you had any say or is that where maybe you could have possibly, uh, butted heads? Could, could that have any impact in during your, your tenure at all? No, we butted heads, we, we butted heads very early. Uh, and I think as a junior realized that, that I was not, I w- if I was around, then all these things that he wanted to do were, was not going to be smooth. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to bring in a player that I didn't, I didn't need. And he wanted to, he wanted to have carte blanche and therefore he needed to, he needed to, in the background, make sure that, that I was, I was leaving. So he had his agenda. He had his agenda, and uh, we did. We didn't get on. Uh, but that's that's uh, that's probably that's probably more two personalities than it was than it was having differences in what should be the 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 road forward for the club. We discussed the road the way forward for the club. We discussed new targets. We discussed who should stay, who should go. Uh, we didn't agree on a lot of those things, and uh, and I think that without without saying it, without saying it, it was just it was becoming you know it was becoming a a mission for him to to try to to try to make the changes that he needed to be able to proceed with this with this program, uh, and I knew that from I knew that from way back. So we did talk about some of the players that. Are going to come in. Uh, we did speak about the young players. Again, I don't. I read an article where the chairman, the chairman, has said that uh, Stewart didn't play the young players, and it was in his contract. It wasn't in my contract, certainly. <clears throat> but what was, what was clear that was uh, Kaiser Chiefs didn't want to be a team that were doing what they're doing now. They didn't want to be buying six and seven players every year because that's the opposite. Of, uh, of producing your own players. So what, what we wanted to do, we wanted to produce our own players and then buy one or two uh, special players uh, special spe- with special requirements and skill sets that, uh, that would embellish the team. Now, I don't think that that was, that was never mentioned. I told everybody the reasons at the regular meetings why I was being patient with some of the younger players, uh, partly because I thought the older the older players, the Keegan Dodds and the Comabiliats, were ahead of them in the pecking order. But we would work actively to give them minutes and get them in, and and gradually they would replace them over the course of a, a couple of seasons. And uh, and everybody was okay with that on the surface. Obviously not now because the chairman finds it finds it. Uh, relevant to go out and, and accuse me of not wanting to play with the kids, which is not true. Coach, I also read that that article as well. Uh, uh, but you know, in that, it, it seems that the statement that was issued about your parting of ways, you know, the chairman is contradicting that that statement by 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 saying you didn't play the kids or whatever. And then the relationship mm-hmm. with the sporting director. Do you think maybe there was a you know? Other reasons, maybe unbeknown to you, um, or, of you know, someone trying to 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 make sure that Stuart is no longer here uh, for 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 the club to to move in a in a certain direction, perhaps. I don't think you need to be a genius, really, Mazzola, to know that that, that uh, to understand the the dynamics there. You know, I was I was there. And at, and at one point we were building up for me we were building in the right, in the right direction the football the football was both quite entertaining and we were winning we were moving in the right direction the kids the kids weren't playing every game but they were getting some playing time and I thought that that was also not too bad at that point the chairman must have been quite happy the supporters must have been quite happy but Already at that time, Kaiser Chiefs was not happy. He was not happy with having me there. So then he's in the ear of the, the chairman. Obviously, it's his son. And and they speak regularly. 
and he paints a picture for him where where whereby Stuart's not the not the man for the job. Eventually, when when other things come in, like a few supporters becoming becoming unruly, when other th- then the chairman is convinced that uh, I have to I have to I have to let Stuart go. Now I think the comments are more about vindicate vindicating that decision, but they're certainly not reflecting the situation when uh, when I left the club. I would. I would uh, I would be very very surprised if the if the chairman or anybody in chiefs could stand up and say that those were the those were the 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 honest reasons. I think that's all about vindicating that I did leave. They have bought a lot of players. They'll talk about bringing the age down, but it's basically they're bringing in players because the players that they they have they don't think are good enough. When you signed your contract to come back, Stuart, did you, you know, some of the some of the elements that, you know, um, for a lack of a better word, led to to you leaving the the, the club? Did you did, were you made aware of them? I mean, obviously, you know, the chairman spoke about playing the kids being in your contract and things like that. I mean, did you know that sporting director would have cut Blanche? Did you know that maybe Bobby would take a back seat? Um, you know, did did you expect any of that? Did you did you know that you would only be given a certain leeway in terms of signing certain players that you wanted. No, not at all. In fact, I didn't even I didn't even know uh, the extent of Kaiser Junior's role. I didn't really know, as far as I was concerned, Bobby had the role that he had. Kaiser Junior would be coming in to learn the ropes, and and, and that was the extent of what I understood of the situation. Uh, it became it became apparent. After a while, that Kaiser Junior was going to be having a more hands-on role, and I tried in the beginning to 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 work with him, but I found it very difficult when I realised that it was it was about it was about him more or less telling me what sort of limits limitations I had in my job uh, became very difficult. And in the finish, it became impossible. But certainly, there was nothing. There was nothing in my contract about playing the kids. Obviously, in every contract, you've got you've got you've got to, in your duties. You will always find to cooperate with the academy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But to be picking young players, no, not at all. And uh, and there was never any real pressure brought. More than we discussed it, you know. For example, why didn't why didn't you play Bebo in that game, or why didn't you play Mashani in that game, or or Machini? Why didn't you play them? Why didn't you play them? And I'd explain, and the explanation was accepted, and we all we all got along on the surface. But obviously not because they they still wanted that, and and I'm sure in a perfect world you would like to have your younger players playing and, and the academy producing players and coming through and playing 150 games or selling some of them. To, to finance the, the academy, of course you'd like that. But if you buy if you buy a Keegan Dolly and he plays the same position as another one of your younger players, then that younger player, his door is going to be closed. So you have to make another plan. How can you gradually bring him along? I would say the same thing now. When when Chiefs have signed as many players as they've signed, that will close the door for some of those young players. And they'll have to make a plan. Doesn't mean to say those players will get kicked out, but it means that you probably won't be playing them in every game. But that's normal, and that's the and that's the path that we were going down. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I think people people are going to understand that that uh, there was a there was an agenda. It wasn't me included. Other people were easier to manipulate. Let's get let's get them in. Let's make sure that. And, and to be fair, I think that was being that was the situation. Uh, so I didn't understand Malethi's role to start with when I went in. I didn't understand Kaiser Junior's role when I started. It became apparent further along the line. And and when you when you when you when you pull in the opposite direction, it's not it's not easy because people then can be a bit uh, well. They don't tell you the truth. Let's say that they they get in their little huddle and they. 
and they make the plans and then they sort of sell it to you or 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 hide it from you and, and it becomes too messy so i realized that very early and and uh, and, and realized that it was not going to be a long a long stay at chiefs speaking of roles coach uh, arthur and dylan uh, did you did you agree or pick or pick them or they were sort of given to you to say this is the technical team that you have to to work with and for a lack of a better word do you do you feel there was a lack of support that because now they are the two sort of head coach and assistant coach after you 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 left usually maybe a coach when they leave they leave with with their technical team to to show support for one yeah. another but they they've stayed behind and they are the one sort of running the ship now yeah no they were they weren't my choices they weren't my choices they were they were they were not imposed upon me because i didn't protest because i, I knew i knew i knew both of them so i didn't protest <clears throat> and what i said it was i would try to mentor them as best as possible and uh, and i'd try and bring them along because obviously in, in, if he, if she was going to be there one year or 10 years there's going to be prog- there should be progression that's what we spoke about and there should be and there should be consistency and that's what we spoke about but i don't feel i don't feel looking back i don't feel looking back that that um, they played any sort of any sort of role in uh, in supporting in supporting me i think they were they realized also very early which way the wind was blowing and they just positioned themselves on on one side and tried to placate me on the other side i didn't feel any sort of support or or any uh what can i say any sort of uh Yeah, any sort of positive, positive discussions about the way the team should be shaped. I think it was it was quite apparent that when when I when I caught COVID, that they started making changes that were more in line with what Kaiser Junior wanted. And so when I came back, it was more of a it was more of a an imposition for them. And so they they had to take a step back again. But no, I just think I just think that. I didn't get I didn't get any great support, and I think that they knew they knew what they were doing, and they knew where, where they could position themselves. And on the younger players, uh, I mean, they, you know, I've I've written columns about this, you know, uh, highlighting that <laughs> perhaps maybe the, the 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 kids aren't good enough, you know. Um, hence, every coach, <laughs> whether it was you, Ernst, or Gavin, I mean, Gavin didn't really have a choice. There was a FIFA ban, so he had to play the kids. Yeah. Uh, but as yeah. soon as uh, you know the the transfer ban was over and players were brought in, the the kids were down the pecking order, and it could be mm. that this season it's the same. It was it was like that with Ernst. Uh, are they good enough? Because there's this whole you know uh, uh, sermon being preached at Naturena about bringing down the average age, you know, getting players from the youth youth academy. The youth academy has been winning the shield competition. They've been winning the engine in the under 16s. So there's there's this whole big drive that this could obviously uh, be in synergy with the senior team. But are, are they yeah. good enough? The ones that you worked with are they? The good thing, enough? well, the thing, the, the one that you see that that question is like how long is a piece of string? You know, there's no real answer to it, is there? I think they may be good enough. They may be good enough, but until until they're given their head, you'll never know. But you don't just you don't just pick them because they're young. You don't just pick them to placate some supporters that don't like the older players. You don't just pick them because a few journalists suddenly get the idea that these are great players. So you don't do that. You bring them through. You bring them through properly, giving them game time, giving them an experience, bringing them in at the right time when the team is when the team is doing okay. You don't throw them in and say sink or swim, you know. So there is a process. Now, I would say that that process has never been followed. It's always been a strategy is not only an idea. A strategy is a plan. The idea of having of having younger players is beautiful, supported by a few of the older players, more experienced old heads. That's beautiful. 
But the reality is that you cannot just throw them in. You have to build. Now, I don't think that's been done. I don't think I don't think Gavin had the chance to do that. I don't think Ernst had the chance to do that. And at every turn, people have been talking about how good the young players are. So for me, the young players may be good enough. They may be good enough. The machine may end up being a top, top player. At the moment, they are all talents. But the, the difference between being a talent and being an established player is how do you bring them through? Now, I would say that if you've got older players, if you've got older players, a part of the process is the, I'll give you an example, Tomok McQuainer, Dean Furman, and yeah, yeah. I told Tomok McQuainer, you play with them, you train with them, you will come on and play games instead of them, and then eventually you will replace them. That's the process. Now, that process has never been happening. It's been throw them in for one game, pull them off after an hour because they didn't make it. Now, I've seen that even since I've left the club. That's been, that been what's happening. Now, that does nothing for the confidence of the kid. It does nothing to make a plan that he sees as credible. And it, and it does nothing to sell the idea of we want the, the, the young players to come through to the supporters. And now what you do is you say, well, let's bring down the average age. OK, well, now you bring in players that their age is not that much different from the ones that you're saying are the super talents. So now you can't use that argument. I'm just saying that you will play instead of them and then you will replace them because now they're competing directly with players. Now, that is not a plan. That is not a plan. You can bring down the average age, yes, but that's usually when you don't have any good young players. If you profess to have good young players, then have the more experienced players around until you can release them and let that young player climb into the seat. Now, that's that's what I've seen in my career, and that's what my experience tells me. I don't know. Maybe maybe you can have an average age of 23, and that looks that sounds great. But the competition dynamics within that squad can be very difficult. If a 21-year-old sees a 24-year-old that's playing much more than he is, he's not going to be happy. If a 21-year-old sees a 28-year-old who's played 65 times for his country playing instead of him, he will think, let me learn from this guy. And then when he's too old, I'll only be 23, 24. Now it's my position. That's what, that's, that's the... That's what. That's how I would, I would look at the recruitment or building of a of a squad. Yeah. Okay, coach. I don't have a, a, a upgraded a Zoom link, so we've got about five minutes. So I want to to squeeze in two questions in that five minutes. One: um, Did you did you refuse to sign Tabotele? And the second one um, is a sort of an, an outro. What what next for 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 Stuart Baxter? Okay. Okay. Tabo Klele was thrown to me, was thrown to me by Kaiser Jr., the idea of signing. And I said, I've got no problem with that. I had him, I had him as, a, as, as a youngster. I've looked at some of the clips of him. He looks like he's improved. And uh, we need a midfield player. I've got no problem with that. I said, I don't think he'll go straight into the team. I said, I have to be honest, but we need an extra centre midfield player. That 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 went to the to the management. And then I got Bobby Bobby all over me saying they're talking contracts with this guy and I've been I've not been involved. And and I said, listen, I said, don't come to me. I said it'd be nice to have. I've not scouted the guy. If he's going to cost us an arm and a leg, it's up to you guys. I just assumed that you two you two were speaking to each other if we're talking about signing a player. Then there was a big then there was a big discussion, and uh, then Tabo went on to a back burner. So I was prepared to take him. I told him I didn't think he'd, he'd start, and that's, that everybody told me that was okay. But then Bobby kicked up a stink because he knew nothing about it. And, uh, and then the internal 
politics of the of Chiefs put the put the deal on hold. Okay, coach. And the last one, uh, just in terms of your future, uh, is there anything new that you can tell us in terms of what's next? Are you going to Simba? <laughs> uh, no, <clears throat> uh, no. I've come back. I'm back in Sweden. I'm back in Sweden. I've had a, I've had a couple of offers from Swedish clubs. I, I just, um, unless it's a special a special uh, project then I would prefer to stay outside of Sweden because I don't know. It's the same as probably if you worked in the States for for 20 years, when you decided to come back to South Africa and take a job in South Africa, you, it's coming home. I don't know if that talks about your passion has gone or you just want to get your feet under the table and put your slippers on and have a glass of wine, you know. <laughs> But that's how it feels for me. That when I when I decide to come back to Sweden, it's like I'm not I'm not travelling anymore, and it would have to be a good project. One that I, I don't feel that I'm just coming home. So there is one. There is one here that I, I can't. It's a, it's more of a it's 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 more of a, a combination of of uh, working in coach education and coaching. So that's that would be a that would be a nice one, but. I would prefer to, to have a, another another stint outside. Now, with that, you've got to be. I've I've turned no to a couple. Uh, you just mentioned, and and again, I think it, it has to be the right one. I mean, look, I'm not 21. I'm not 21 where I can make a mistake with this one. I don't want to get in, involved into. I don't want to waste another year like the one I, I wasted with Chiefs. I don't want to waste time. I want, I want to be in a, a proper project and be there for a couple of years and get your teeth into it and, and be in sync with the club. And, and that's what I want. And, and so if if that's in Africa, maybe moving back closer to home. Home would be also OK. Uh, a national job would be OK. But it has to be the. It has to feel right because, at my time in my life, my career, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't need. I don't want to waste time. 